Troy E. McCormick. Today we are at Battle Grove Cemetery. It's in Indiana, Kentucky. That's a huge cemetery. It's hot. The wind is kind of cool. There's a lot of trees around the cemetery. There's a lot of shade. Most of them. Join me as we take a little tour around this historic cemetery, and I'll see you at the end. Let's get started. Let's start right here. Like this angel is holding the baby in his hand, arms. So Luke 18, 16, let the little children come to me and do the hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Uh, Stones. Sad to see, but that's part of life. Like a little lamb right there. A little bear holding the ball. Yeah. A little owl. Maybe on the cloud. Teddy bear. Morning. Oh yeah, look at this. Fire truck. Beautiful edging on that tombstone. I'm gonna walk on the floor a little bit. Like I said, there's a lot of shade around here. It's hot, about 90 some degrees, but with that wind, it's not really that bad. I do have a water with me just in case I need it. I probably will. Uh, Barkley. Joe Robert Barkley, AIC US Air Force, 1929 and 2019. Look at this Argo with tombstone and shape of the book. I don't know. Yeah. John Martin and his wife Murray Louise. She's still here. Oh, look at this one. No love. Uh, that's that side. Lane Franklin, 1966 to 2022. Oh, look at this. Beautiful tombstone. Patricia. That's a beautiful one. I like the mural of the waterfall and it's like a water wheel. I like it. It's beautiful tombstone. Driving by, and I kind of saw this big tall tombstone. Caleb Wayne Fitzgerald Sollings. August 13, 1988. Passed away June 2, 2015. Humbled to be a dreamer among the flock. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Matthew 5 8. You see the other side of it. Wow, look at that. I believe that a single piece of music can channel the spirit and really bring out the best of anything or anyone. Caleb okay, Fitzgerald. It's a beautiful tombstone. Driving by, I saw this other one. Thompson tombstone. It's uh, like pillars. Got their names down there. 
Terry A. Beautiful. The horse and buggy. Beautiful. Looks like a rock. Like a, uh, we call it a slab of rock. Driving by. I see a lot of crypts in the cemetery. Let's take a look at them. There's one that says Hamilton, right under the twin two trees under a shade. Nineteen thirty-five, nineteen sixty-one, nineteen forty-three. Uh, they're long gone. I mean, it's a big crib. Look at the size of it. There's nothing on the side. No plaque on the side. Uh, nothing on the back. Well, there's a little etching. W.D. Hamilton, 1850, 1880, there's more people in there. That's the Hamilton Crypt. Anybody wants to know, that's a hospital. Yep, hospital. Uh, this one's Phillips. Well, obviously there's a lot, and it's covered so you can't see inside. Get the William Walker Phillips. Hey. There's a light back here. Not a stained glass. Can't see through it. It's like a vent, a couple of vents. Oh, Phillips Crypt. And it's just right down from those two crypts up here. Look at the shade here. Labou or Labus, Labou, I don't want to call it Labou. It says Betty Bell Goodwin and William Franklin Labou. <coughs> Excuse me. Look. I told you this cemetery has a lot of shade around it. Been some cemeteries and some don't have this much shade. Not even the one over Greendale, Indiana. Has some shade, but most of it's mostly sun where the sun hits. Like over here. There's Crip Void. Get this way. The big side of that obelisk there. See more of those uh, above ground crypts. I'm not for sure. Like my, I don't know if I said in my last videos, but I'm guessing they put your coffin in there. And just, as long as you're in a crypt, I guess the pictures. So, Majority Wayne Rankin record. Rankin record is the plot here. And Vernon over here. It's. Lucy, Ross, and Edward. Uh, Betty, and our mother and father. Lucy, Ross, and Edward Lawrence, Rakin. She was the daughter of Edward Lawrence and Lucy Ross Rankin Majori was a retired high school English teacher. Having taught continuously for 47 years, she attended Georgetown College and was a graduate of Transylvania University in 1952. She was a member of Kappa Delta Sorority, a member of our Marshall Chapter of Daughters of the American Revolution, a member of the Falls of the Ohio Chapter of Daughters of the American Colonists, both of Louisville, Kentucky, and a member of Walnut Street Baptist Church, Louisville. Uh, Vernon was born in Salusa, Salvisa, Kentucky, and Mercer County. He was the son of Will T. and L. Trisler Record. Vernon was a retired mortician, having served in the funeral profession since 1946. He was a Navy veteran of World War II, a member of the EFW. 
Post 6935, American Legion Post 34, a member of Anderson Lodge, Lawrenceburg, number 90, a member of York Wright, attended Georgetown College, and a member of the Walnut Street Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky. Majority and Vernon met at Georgetown College in January of 1946 and were married, united in marriage July 18, 1946 at the college by Dr. S.S. S. Hill, president of the Georgetown College. I love you, Mernie. And Lucy Ross. That's a lot of read. Teddy Lynn. Born 1919, passed away 2005. Babe was born in Morning Glory, Kentucky, in Nicholas County. Mother and father. Sir Ross and Edward Lawrence Rankin were, we love you, Betty, Lynn, and Majority Vernon. Honor thy father and mother as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. I always have, when I stop in any cemetery, I gotta make sure beat out the Marines have fallen. John R. Peake Jr., Master Sergeant, U.S. Marine Corps, World War II. Born 1922, he passed away in 2015. Semper Fi, brother. Semper Fi. Oh, nice and cool in this Look at this. Right under a tree. Massive monument. I don't know if that's a tombstone or a family pot. I don't yeah it's a family monument or family pot. It's probably all theirs. Well the tree covers most of it. And the way you can see if you walk right up on it. It's gonna look like a big urn. I like the cross. A little bit La I like it was up there. I guess it might be related. I like where they decorated it. Tree to put plants around it. I'm guessing that's a family plot. But there's no names on it. You know, there's people here, so that's probably a family monument. Alright, drove a little further. I noticed this when I came in. Like a little bitty pot right here. I don't know if anybody buried in it or it looks like Star of David, I'm guessing the Jewish part of the cemetery. Doesn't say though. Let me look around and see if there's anything about it. It's closed, so it's gotta be somebody buried here. I don't see anything on marking what it is. I don't say. It just, I'm guessing the Star of David Jewish related has to be. Oh, maybe it's to celebrate uh, to uh, mem in memory of all those who were murdered in World War II, maybe. I'm guessing. I'm not sure. They don't say anything about it on the brochure. I saw this coming in. Uh, is, it, is it a chapel? Or? Oh, it's locked. Uh, maybe they hold funerals out here. Sometimes. That's why I believe. I think it's a mini funeral home out here. Oh, look at that. In the memory of Ruth W. Swinford. Koi fish. Got a big one here. I don't have any turtles in here. This really makes the cemetery pop. She's in. View in this one. Nice to have these on location too, so you can have your ashes interred. Some other stuff too.
went over there, but it didn't really have anything on it. Driving by, I saw this one. Brandon Kiefer Holbert. A spectacular, loving, and unique son, brother, grandson, and friend. He was born on May 6, 1991, passed away May 11, 2011. Was he 10? No, he's 20. My bad. My math is terrible. And this says, We little knew that day God was going to call you home. In life, he loved you dearly. In death, we do the same. It broke our hearts to lose you. You did not go alone. For part of us went with you the day God called you home. You left us beautiful memories. Your love is still our guide. And though we cannot see you, you are always at our side. Our family chain is broken and nothing seems the same. But as God calls us one by one, the chain will link again. Beautiful. That's a very beautiful tombstone. 20 years old. 20 years old. Now look at this tombstone, this headstone. A real long one. And uh, I guess this is a pot. Cox. Gross wage. It's like a combine. Look at that. It goes all the way across. It's got a thing on the other side of it. No, oh, it's just blank. I mean, it's freaking. That is un interesting and unique. Joseph, Adela, Lenny, and Thelma. My guess is they were all friends. They're real good friends. So they decide when they go together, they're going to have big tombstones to link each other. It's very interesting, and very fascinating. Oh yeah, I've been noticing these around the cemetery. I'm thinking you can drink out of that. There's one on each one of these. I've seen four of them already. There's probably more. Well, a day like today, it's good to have that for people to drink out a little bit. And I saw this. Deming Bachelor. Bachelor. Very unique. Two pillars. I think it's a uh, I think it's a Demi and Battler Bachelor family monument. Because there's a, I see a few Demi and Bachelor. Yeah, I guess it's a combination of the families. And just across from that, look at this. Some older tombstones. I saw this. Angel on top, looks like on top of a rock. This is Caleb Walton and Mary E. He passed away in 1875. She passed away in 1874. So she passed away a year before him. I like it. There's an angel on top of a rock, but it looks like a parchment, right? Doing some writing. You know? I guess the pen's gone. I was just in front of my car here. Huge family monument. McGibbon. McGibbon. Well, that's neat. So it's McGibbon. Look at this way up there. It's an urn with a cloth wrapped around it. Wow. There's a bunch of them. There's a bunch of them around. I was passing by and I saw this monument, headstone. Like an angel grabbing the baby's hand and uh, leading him up. Uh, this is Matt, I guess Maddie. That's what 1889 and Kenneth H. 1889 or 1888. Beautiful. That's a beautiful looking little tomb. That's an old tombstone too. I didn't touch it. 
because uh, you watch a lot of cemetery videos, you don't want to touch the tombstones like the where old like that with all that rust because that can make it fall disintegrate more. So I won't touch it anymore. Looks like the Virgin Mary with a, a baby in her hand. Zayden Michael. He didn't get a chance to live. It's sad. A lot of unique tombstones. Some of them have pictures on them. Like that one. That one. Uh, Sadie and Noah. That's where everybody on. Stuff like this, the cemetery makes it sad, but it is part of life. You're not guaranteed to live. You never know. Now look at this. Check this out. <laughs> wow. That's an old crypt. That's a huge crypt. Let's look at the one on the left over here first. That is very huge. James Hodson, Elizabeth Hodson. Oh, they're empty. Oh, those two are empty, but the four up top, I think there's, there, somebody's in them. It's about the size of the ones are with William Henry Harrison's monument up there in Ohio, about the same size. There's two empty down there. Maybe the maybe the other two went somewhere else, but there's a top up there. All right, go along this side. Oh, it's locked, which is understandable. Oh, it's storage. There's nobody buried in here, as far as I know. I just place to put all the storage at. That's why it's locked. Smell like a barn. I'm guessing they built this as a crib and I guess nobody could put in it, so they decided to make it storage, put wood, I guess to put over the graves, put a coffin to lay on. Check that little park out. Yeah, we're still in the cemetery. But this little park right here. I don't know what it's about. It's unique. Yep, I'm guessing it's just a small park. Very, very interesting. All right, I was passing by. Well, look at that. I like when the girls do that for their, their past ones. It says John Lee. Picture of them. I guess he passed away. 1970, 1986. Only about 16. Wow. Oh, look at that. Johnny loved and was loved and he has gone home to God. They are not lost who find the light of sun and stars in God. Our children. Hey look, I found another gazebo. It's like just in the middle of a turnaround. So. It's a place to rest, sit. Yep. And my car right there. Yep. Well, I found another crypt. This one's Costello. Let's see if we can see inside. Nope, stained glass. Let's look around the other side. There's a vent. I'm guessing they're laying right here. Actually, it just looks like room for two. Oh. Well, Costello Monument. A crypt. The Poindexter. There's 
James Robert Poindexter and Mary Lou Poindexter. He passed away in 1940. She passed away 10 years later in 1950. More events. Okay. Poindexter. Passed by. I saw this headstone. Look at this. In a sailor's uniform, I guess back in the 20s. He's got a lunchbox, and he's got a hat and a flag. That is unique. I like it. Doesn't say who it is though. Next to it is a huge monument, withers, and what if that has something to do with it? I don't know. Man, I have nothing to do with each other. Uh, I'm guessing another dedication monument. Oh, Marshall Battery, Confederate States of America. Like Tram. Died in 1883. Erected by the alumni of the Cynthiana Graded City School, September 1898. Well, let's dedicate it to the Confederate Battery. This is Precious Memory Garden. That's what this is. Wow. Wade, uh, LaCour, Browning, interesting tombstone right there in the middle, where that flag is. Alright, head back up to the car, still got a little bit more to see and we'll be done. Marshall, Mary Ellen, I like it, that's a that's a pointy tune headstone there. Yeah. Harry and Betty. That's interesting. Oh, look at this. Second Battle of Cynthiana. Brigadier General John Hood Morgan approached Cynthiana with 1,200 men on the June 11th at dawn. Colonel Conrad Garris. With the 168th Regiment Ohio Volunteer Infantry and some home guards, about 300 men altogether, constituted the Union forces at Cynthiana. Morgan divided his men into three columns, surrounded the town, and launched an attack at the covered bridge, driving the Union forces back towards the depot and North Long Railroad. The Confederates set fire to the town, destroying many buildings and some of the Union troops. As the fighting flared in Cynthiana, another Union force, about 750 men of the 171st Ohio National Guard under the command of Brigadier General Edward Hobson, arrived by train about a mile north of Cynthiana at Keller's Bridge. Morgan trapped his new force in the meander of the Nilicking River. After some fighting, Morgan forced Hobson to surrender. Altogether, Morgan had about 1,300 Union prisoners of war camping with him overnight in line of battle. Brigadier General Stephen Gano Burgridge, with 2,400 men, a combined force of Ohio, Kentucky, and Michigan Mountain Infantry and Cavalry, attacked Morgan at dawn on the 12th. The Union forces drove the Confederates back, causing them to flee into town where many were captured or killed. Morgan escaped. Cynthiana demonstrated that Union numbers and mobility were starting to take their toll. Confederate cavalry and partitions could no longer raid with impunity. Alright, just got done reading that. This is the Confederate Dead Memorial. Now, I don't know, I don't know if any of my viewers are touchy about this subject, about the Confederacy, but put all that aside, there were two sides to that war. Not just the Union side, there was a the Confederate side too. 
in my experience history should always be remembered no matter how bad or how worse it is because we need to learn from it we hope it never happens again doesn't take much to start no civil war which we if you remember if you know your history in 1860 we had a civil a fighting when south carolina seceded because of a presidential election yeah abraham lincoln was elected and he wasn't even on a ballot in the south so yeah that kind of rubbed everybody the wrong way back then but this is the confederate memorial dedicated to those i guess who were killed here in the battle of Santiana, second battle and so their names shall never be forgot while while fame her record keeps and glory guards the hallowed spot where valor proudly sleeps a better memorial it says dedicated to all men and women from harrison county who served in all branches of the military service on behalf of our country the army navy Air Force Marines and the Coast Guard, placed with pride, honor, and dignity by Stephen and B. Wallen, post number 27 of the American Legion of Auxiliary Unit number 27 of Cynthia, Kentucky. There's a bench on one side, and that's what this bench says. There's a memory of those who served, donated by Marilyn and Jean R. Ritchie. Yep. I look on the back of this huge monument. American Legion US. All right, thank you for joining me on this cemetery tour here at Battle Grove Cemetery, Cynthia, Kentucky. And on behalf of everybody here, including the Confederate Memorial Day, rest in peace, and I'll see you on my next video. And don't forget to take care of yourself, take care of your loved ones. For now, I'll say bye. I'll see you in the next video.